our last Zoom. Are you, are you there? Can you hear me? And if so, please begin. Is there one more? Nope, that's, that's it. Okay, I guess a Q&A. Let me begin now with uh, questions from our representatives and senators. I believe probably about 30 minutes. Oh, we have one additional witness. Ah. Commentator. Please. All right. Uh, I will introduce to you now, Mr. President, you are connected. <laughs> Works, but uh, I really appreciate uh, being asked to speak. And I'm in the Oval Office right now, and it's very interesting to see what's going on. And this was an election that we won easily. We won it by a lot. Uh, a big energy uh, official was on this morning uh, on a uh, important show and said, "There's no way Trump didn't win." Pennsylvania, because the energy industry was all for him. Uh, I saw, you know, with, with my eyes what happened, and he told me horror stories, absolute horror stories. So this was a uh, very sad to say it. This election was rigged, and we can't let that happen. We can't let it happen for our country. And this election has to be turned around, because uh, we won Pennsylvania by a lot, and we won all of these swing states by a lot. Anybody watching television the night of the election was saying, wow, I was called by the biggest political people. Congratulations, Sarah, on a big win. And all of a sudden, ballots were dumped all over the place and a lot of horrible things happened. And everybody in that room, I want to thank all of the people that signed affidavits and all of the speakers. You fantastic people. You're great patriots. I want to thank the senators for being there. And uh, it's so important. Day before... Thanksgiving, it really represents somebody between the voter suppression and all of the horrible things that happened to poll watchers. Uh, we have poll watcher affidavits uh, piled up to the ceiling. They're all over. They were treated horribly all over this, uh, in all, all of these swing states. I mean, virtually all of the swing states. And many other things were happening that were horrible, just horrible. But the poll watchers weren't allowed to watch. Uh, they were, in many cases, whisked out of the room, not only into pens that were 20, 30, 40, 60, 100 feet away, where you couldn't even see. They were using binoculars. People are reporting that they had to use binoculars, and that didn't work. Uh, if you were a Republican poll watcher, you were treated like a dog. And uh, the Democrats had no problem, but they were rough. They were, they were literally uh, pushed out, and it was rough tactics. This is... What, what happened here, this is not the United States of America, what happened. And I think everybody knows that that's why you're uh, there and that's why you're so vehement about it. Uh, we have many, many cases, many, many cases of people walking in. A, a woman, an elderly woman walks in looking forward to voting November 3rd and says, oh, good, where would I go about voting? I'm sorry, you've already voted. Your ballot is in. I said, no, I didn't vote. I didn't vote. No, your ballot is in. You've already voted. In all cases for Biden, by the way. She said, no, no, I want to vote. Nope, your ballot is in. And then they give her a provisional ballot to sign, which goes nowhere. It's a disgrace that this is happening to our country. We won this election by a lot. We got 74 million votes. And if you would have said 74 million votes the day before the election, every single professional in the business would have said there's no way of beating that we got 11 million votes more than we had four years before in 2016 and we got many votes more than ronald reagan had when he won 49 states and nobody would have said we even had a chance of losing and all you had to do is take a look at the numbers at 10 o'clock in the evening when everybody thought the election was virtually over and then very weird things happened but they're not weird to professionals, and they're not weird to Dominion and other people that operate machines, and they're not weird to the people that handle the ballots where they were flooding the market. People were getting two and three and four ballots in their home. People that were dead were signing up for ballots. Not only were they coming in and 
putting in a ballot, but dead people were requesting ballots, and they were dead for years, and they were requesting ballot, ballots. And the whole world is watching us. The whole world is watching the United States of America, and we can't let them get away with it. And we have judges that are afraid to make a decision. We have judges that don't want to do the same thing. A very good lawyer said, well, sir, I mean, that's a big statement for a judge to overthrow an election. I said, really? If he got hundreds of thousands of votes more than he was entitled to get through all of the things that I'm listening to right now, and you're just covering a few of them, we have, we have hundreds and hundreds of affidavits of stories that are even worse than the stories I'm hearing. Why wouldn't they overturn an election? Certainly overturn it in your state, because we have other states that are just as bad. If you look at uh, Michigan with Detroit, you look at the things that happened in Detroit, where you have a voter, but you have more votes than you have voters. You take a look at Detroit, Michigan, you have more votes than you have voters. And then you have two people that don't want to certify. They don't want to certify and they're harassed violently and they turned off the cameras during the harassment for two hours. And then they said, wow, and they were afraid and they voted and then they went back to sign and they couldn't do it because they said, we can't do it because this is corrupt. This is horrible what's taking place. Think of it, more votes than you have voters. But that was the least of it. They have things that were as bad as that. And this is going on all over, all over. We're doing very well in a lot of states. A lot of good things are happening in Georgia. We're getting little help from government, but a lot of good things are happening in Georgia, Wisconsin, in uh, Michigan. They're seeing what happened in Detroit. And we sure are looking at what's happening in Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. What happened in Philadelphia, they keep the poll watches not only in pens, but they keep them out of the building. And the only reason they got back into the building was they got a court order. And then the definition of back into the building was very far away where they couldn't see anything. And they talk about closed circuit television, except you couldn't see it because the picture was so unclear, you didn't even know what they were doing. They could have been playing a baseball game. So it's a very sad thing for our country to have this. And they have to turn over the results. It would be easy for me to say, oh, let's worry about four years from now. No. This election was lost by the Democrats. They cheated. It was a fraudulent election. They flooded the market. They defrauded everybody on ballots. And I just want to thank everybody for being there. You're doing a tremendous service. This is a very important moment in the history of our country. And you're doing a tremendous service to our country. And uh, don't worry about bravery. Because the people that talk the most, they're not the ones you have to worry about. And these are all talkers. They intimidate. But these are not people that you're going to ultimately have to. They push you around. They pushed our poll workers out. Our poll watchers were pushed out of the building. Okay? Some got back in. They were put in the pens. But these are not people. Don't be intimidated by these people. But they're bad people. They're horrible people. And they're people that don't love our country. So we don't have to worry about four years right now. We have to worry about what happened on November 3rd and previous to November 3rd. And by the way, after November 3rd, when people put votes in and they put them in illegally, they put them in after the polls closed. And one of our great Supreme Court justices made mention of that. And I can't imagine that any justice or any Everybody looking at it could be thrilled when they vote after the election is over. So I want to thank everybody very much for being there. I want to thank the state Senate, respected people, tremendous people, and you're doing a tremendous service for our country. And if something was done wrong, if this election was, was won fraudulently, and that's what happened, it was a fraud. And we're talking about, very importantly, many more ballots, many more votes than the number we need. In other words, if we needed 50,000 votes, we're not talking about we found nine dead people that voted. Of course, there were many more than that, many numbers that nobody even believes. No, we're talking about numbers that are far in excess of the 50,000, far in excess of another state where we lost by 10,000. 
And they went absolutely wild because we got far more votes than they thought possible. And they just stepped on the gas and they got caught. Just like they got caught spying on my campaign, they got caught exactly, they got caught doing this. So I really appreciate it and the country appreciates it. And we have to turn the election over because there's no doubt we have all the evidence, we have all the affidavits, we have everything. All we need is to have some judge listen to it properly without having a political opinion or having another kind of a problem because we have everything. And by the way, the evidence is pouring in now as we speak. And I want to thank Rudy Giuliani for having the courage to do this because there are other lawyers that back down because they were being screamed at. Rudy is a, uh, he's the greatest mayor in the history of New York, and there's a reason. He's got great courage, and he doesn't care. He wants to do what's right. And I told him the other day, Rudy, you were the greatest mayor in the history of New York, and you see what happened to New York without Rudy. You were the greatest mayor, but this is more important. What you're doing now is far more important than being a great mayor of the city of New York and being its greatest mayor by far. By the way, by far. This is going to be your crowning achievement because you're saving our country. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I, I think what you've just heard guarantees that 100 years from now, that this is the most important public hearing ever held by the Senate committee.